Welcome back to the studio. This is Susan with Paper Craft Possibilities. Today we're going to record some pictures from a farm that we visited in Fremont, California. We had a lot of fun that day. And I'm still crushing through my paper that I've collected from close to my heart. So here are some of the papers here that I'm thinking about using. Um, this is the sticker sheet that I'm hoping to pull a, th a few things from. And let me show you the flip side of some of these. Um, this looks like the wood paper that um, is presently out with Stampin' Up, so I, I love it. So here are some back sides. That one's just a plain one. But here are some of the other papers. I'm not quite sure what we're going to use. I do know, let me turn this around so it makes sense. I do want to use this windmill paper. I think it would be great for this page. And then, just a FYI, my niece and I visited the silos, um, you know, Chuck and Joanna's place out in, um, up in Texas, out in Texas. And the silos on here, I thought, I'm going to do some fussy cutting and I'm going to do a page with some of these here. I thought it would be perfect. So, I'm going to get two pages, uh, actually two more two-page layouts from this collection, and I think I will have maxed it out. So let me run the intro and we'll get started. All right, I think I've somewhat decided on the layout and the papers I want to use. I've come in with some sapphire or let's say Knight of Navy paper here, and I've cut out a one inch border out of my paper so I can save the insides. Then I'm bringing in this windmill paper from the collection, and I think I want to put it here, and I'm gonna basically be covering up this windmill. I'm gonna keep this windmill um, out to see, I think. We'll see how this plays out. And so these pages will be laid out like that. Then my pictures, I'm grabbing for them over on the left-hand side. Pardon me. I think for sure I wanna have this one over in here somewhere because this I'm gonna kinda of use as just the title as I had said on the entry. I had said um, when we started the video that this has everything on it. It has the name of the farm, um, when it was established, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to put that over in here, I think. Then I've got <laughs> these sheep, really cute. Um, here I have my husband with a goat. I don't know if I want them like this. But I do want to cover up this windmill because I think it's repetitive um, to have too many windmills on one page. So I think maybe I'll stack these. And what's nice too is there's a line in this paper. It's like a ledger paper that'll help me line things up so I make sure my pictures are straight. And we've got this picture. Let's see. Maybe a little bit closer, maybe an eighth of an inch closer just to kind of add more room for me then here's our eio picture um i'm wondering if that will go there no let's see maybe up in here but i think i want to put some clustering elements down here so let me move this up quite a bit Maybe I could have some fun and set that off on a diagonal, or not a diagonal, but just offset. So let's see, let's move this down just a little. I think I might like that layout. Now I have one more picture in my hand. I think this would frame this windmill really nicely, so let's do that. Then, I have a few other things that I want to add. I do collect brochures and things from when I'm traveling because I think it tells a lot of information here. And you can then just pull this back out. I'm not going to paste it down. I'm going to put it in 
one of the envelope dies that comes from um, Stampin' Up. Let me show that to you. I have used this repeatedly. In fact, I've pulled out a lot of stamps and dies that I thought I might use. This is from Country Flowers, and I love the little um, milking stool here. Um, I just think it's great. And then there's a milk bottle here, or a milk can. Um, this one just had some textures in it I thought could be fun, so we'll have to see if I'll use that or not. This one I just have repeatedly used, and you've watched me use it on the videos. This is called um, Pocket Thoughts Dies from Stampin' Up. And this is what I've been using to keep my brochures um, on in kind of stuck in this pocket. And then you can take them out anytime you want and read about the location you're at. Um, this is a tag die that I use. And I think I'm going to use some tags here. And then, of course, this one, I think I've used it on almost every page. Um, this is from Stampin' Up! And it's called, as you know by now, it's called Spotlight on Nature Dies. And I think I'm going to use maybe something like that over in this corner just to kind of, of um, base some of my die cuts on. And this one is from Close to My Heart. Excuse me. Yeah, Close to My Heart. Goodness. And I think I'm going to go ahead and stamp um, some of these out. I might use this on the front of the envelope. I'm pointing like you can see me over here. Um, when I make the envelope to slip this into or the pocket, I might use one of those die cuts for the top of that. So... Um, let me do some die cutting and some stamping, um, and I'll be right back with you. All right, I was able to get some die cutting done and make some decisions. So I'm going to walk you through this as I do what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, these are little wood pieces, um, real thin wood that came with this workshop when we got it. So I'm going to use those. These are a couple of the stickers that came on my sticker sheet. I have gone through with my embossing powder and I've just um, lightly touched, <coughs> excuse me, lightly touched on the back of them and that takes away most of the stick. And then there was some gingham pattern um, on the flip side of this wood. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and layer this up. So let me go ahead and do that. Let's see. I want to try and get some of that the gingham pattern in on all of the sides. Let's see if I can do that. See how this looks. I might have to cut it down a little bit more. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my corner rounder out and mimic what's going on on the sides here of the sticker. So let's see how that's gonna look. I think that'll be good. So let me get my corner rounder out. Let's corner round these. Okay, almost there. All right, so I'm going to put that on here. And I think I'm going to um, put some dimensionals on the back of this. So let me first get this tape down. I often wondered when I heard about first putting the powder on the back of the stickers, if it would allow the tape to stick when you go to actually tape or glue this down. And it doesn't, it doesn't take away from that. So it's a really nice little trick there. Hack, I guess you could say. Let's bring it down a little bit more. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to glue this up on here. Let's say tape it on here. And I think, oops. 
Uh-oh. Oh, well, it's on now. I was going to do dimensionals, but I don't want to ruin my paper back there. So what I am going to do is on the back of here, when I'm doing these pockets, I like to use a foam, like a foam tape, if you will. And they're super, super tiny pieces. And I put them, I'll show you here in a minute. What's happening is when I'm using this foam here, it gives this little pocket some room to expand and you can probably put more in there. I don't plan on putting anything else in there, but um, I think it's just a good trick to do on these pockets. And I do try and put these kind of in the middle of this flap here or close to the edge. I just don't wanna see that tape, um, the foam part of it. I don't wanna see it from the side. So there's just a fine margin there into how you should put that. Also, if you had some of the, if this tape, I've never seen it, but I know 3D foam tape or dimensionals come in black. That might be an option on this dark paper. So we're gonna take this off. <laughs> we're gonna try and get this off. Okay, one down. Does anyone else like me where you're crafting on a page and you have everything out so you can look at your options? I do pick it up when I'm done, but um, man, oh man, if you guys could see my desk right now. Okay. So I think that's good. What's nice too is this... Um, Windmill paper has a like a ledger to it, a ledger print, so there's a lot of lines in there. Okay, so there's my form or my flyer. So now let's come back and look at this. Okay, I think I know where I want that. Um, let's back up for a minute. Um, let's see if I can just lift this a little. Yeah, I can. What I wanted to do is these little wood pieces, I want to put behind this tag. So this one I want a little bit lower. This other one I'm gonna put in so the triangle portion sticks up a little bit farther. You'll see what I mean here. Hold that down for a minute. And with this, I think since I have these out, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And this was a little sticker. It says the good life on it. I am going to put some of these very thin foam strips on the back here. Feels good to use some of the stuff that was in my stash. And by the way, I'm sure I've mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again while I'm putting this together. If you go over to my new webpage, which is papercraftpossibilities.net, and I'm looking for my scissors. Bear with me, everyone. I like to use my nonstick scissors when I'm doing this foam. Um, if you go on over there, I am um, selling a lot of my close to my heart stick or stickers, <laughs> um, my dies, my stamps, just so I can bring in a lot more Stampin' Up product and kind of keep all my product fresh. So there, we're gonna put that there. It looks like it's about centered there, okay. So far, so good. Now I have thought about bringing in some of these buttons just to bring in that wood tone that's up here to bring it down here. Um, not sold on that, so I'm gonna hold off for a minute. All right, so let's put these pictures down. 
and I have gone ahead and matted these with the French vanilla paper from Close to My Heart. And I have also done some mocha on the bottom mat, and the mocha is from Close to My Heart. So let's get this one in here. Okay, now this was um, from this set, and obviously it's a bigger cow than you can see there. And I went ahead and I have it on toffee paper and I stamped it with espresso ink. And those are all colors from um, Close to My Heart. So what I'm wanting to do here is I'm wanting it to look like this. Uh, again, it's one of those little wood pieces. And I use the word wood loosely because <laughs> it's pretty thin. But um, I'm going to put this in the background. So let me do this one first. I'll pull out my tweezers, my reverse tweezers. And I'm going to do this over here so I don't get it on my pictures. Ask me how I know. I've done it. Okay. So we're going to put this back in here. And I think with my my little moo cow, <laughs> I'm going to stick him, I think right in there, but I'm going to do it with some dimensionals because I want him to stand out from this fence in the background. So let me pull some of these out and stick them up here. Anyways. Today I was able to actually send out some more of the um, the uh, die sets and stamp sets from Close, Close to My Heart that um, I am selling. And they have, some of them have never been used, unfortunately. And then um, many of them have only been used once when I'm doing a page. And so you might want to take a look at those. I just, you know, I make sure I can use a stamp at least five times when I purchase it. Or I can um, use the dies at least five times, or at least 50% of what's on the sheet so I can get my money's worth. And um, those were just ones when I first started, because I didn't start with Stampin' Up! until last year, although I've been doing this for a long time. But I didn't have a chance to use them before they announced that they were going to be closing the company. So that's why I'm selling those, because I'm trying to keep my stock real fresh for you guys. Okay, so except for these buttons, I think we're good on that page. I'm gonna bring in the other page. And the reason why I'm bringing them is separately, it's just a lot easier to show you. Okay, let's place this all. First, I wanna bring in this piece of sapphire paper from Close to My Heart. And I believe I'm going to put it up just like that. Like I said, there's stuff everywhere on my desk. Okay. Put this down and then I'll know where to position the rest of my pictures and die cuts. Okay. Bear with me. Okay. I think we're going to bring them up there. Let me place these just to figure it out real quick. Maybe it was right there, I think. I think I wanted to do that up there. This little um, peacock was so funny. It says here on the sign, if you can't read it, it says, caution, old grumpy peacock, stay six feet away. And he was one loud guy. You could hear him a long ways away. Okay. And what I wanna do with these is, this was a sticker that was on the sticker sheet. 
I've put a mat underneath it of the um, mocha paper. And then this was a zip strip, but I do need to cut these down a little. Um, I think I need to go to 11 and a half. So let me cut those. That's gonna work out perfect. So what I'm wanting to do is bring this one up in here and this one down below. That'll work. Then I've cut some tags out and I'm not putting anything wording or anything on the background. They're just for looks. And they're gonna come in like that. Get some of these scraps out of the way. And then I'm going to put this up on some 3D foam dots or some dimensionals. And I'm gonna bring in some string here. And I'm gonna use this, I love these. These are, um, it's called the Baker's Twine Essentials Pack. And all of the neutrals in here, and they have them in other colorways to this group, but I love this. So we're gonna use that. And up here, I'm not quite sure what I wanna do here. It just needs something. So I'll have to give that some thought. In the meantime, let me go ahead and start getting all of this down so I don't have it slip, slip, slide in the way. The company where I used to buy my tape from that I loved apparently is not making it anymore. So I've gone ahead yesterday and ordered tape from Stampin' Up. I've never used their tape before, so I'm assuming everyone just raves about it. So I'm sure it'll be just fine. I'll have to let you know when it gets here. You'll see me using it. But I can't say, I mean, I was disappointed when I learned the other company was not selling their tape anymore. What I did like too about it is that it was a smaller format so you could still see what I was doing on the page, um, but it held a lot of tape. So I didn't go through it really fast, which is good because when you're in the middle of a project making a video, you really don't want it to run out. Okay, I'm just trying to line this up. with the line on the paper here, which has been very helpful. All right, on these, I do wanna use some string, some twine, and that ink on my fingers. Um, I think I want, yeah, we'll go with this tone because I think it works the best. And we're gonna double it up. So I cut off probably an eight inch piece maybe. I'm gonna double it up and then I'm going to send the piece that's looped through the end of my tag. And I wanna make sure I have the right side here. And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take these and put it through here through the hole again. And I'll do the other one too and see if I can get my fingers out of the way. I may wanna double that up some more. It just doesn't look like enough. So let's do it one more time. I kinda of want it substantial. So if it's on there, it's making a statement and it's just not looking like an afterthought. So same thing, you go through the loop, you put it through the hole and bring that loop through and then push your two strings to the back and tighten it up easily so you don't rip your paper. And let's see if I can make them all the same length. My other one escaped to the back. Have y'all ordered your paper on the sale that's going on right now? <laughs> I went to go order some yesterday for a class I'm putting together and um, it was sold out. So I'm hoping it comes back in stock real soon. <laughs> um, and it says it will. It says uh, when you look at the inventory, it says that it will be coming back um, at the end of this month. So I'm looking every day in hopes it comes in early because 
I need it. Okay, I'm gonna do both of these at one time. But I, I am gonna double it up like I did the other one. So, I've got it kind of in half there. And we're gonna take that loop, send it through the hole. This time I want the gingham in the front, which is this blue paper. And send that through, pull up that loop and send the strings back to the back. There we go. Okay, so what I wanna do with this is I wanna overlap them. And I think I wanna offset them both just a little. So let me put down this one first. And I'm gonna tape them both up at the same time. Okay, I wanna make sure I have these right, okay. I get going and talking in the video and I forget what I'm supposed to be doing here. All right, so, looks like I forgot a string there, I have to cut it off. I wanna come in like that. And we'll give this another little haircut. All right, then I've got this, and this was a sticker from the set. I'm gonna pop that up on some dimensionals. I love these dimensionals. Because of their shape, they're easy to get off of this paper. Some of them with other companies are not that way. All right, we're gonna pull off the uh, release tape here, or it's not tape, it's actually just a piece of like wax paper. And we'll put this one down. Okay, okay, just had an idea. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna bring in some espresso ink which I was using on some other things. And it's sitting right here to the corner of my desk. So I can bring it into frame here. And let's use this instead. We're gonna ink up the edges just to give it a little bit more definition, a little bit more rustic. Okay, I like that. It does give it some more definition. I think that was what it needed. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to get some tear tape, which is something like this. And I need to find the end. There we go. Tear a couple pieces off. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come back here. I'm going to take that off of there. Trying not to bend this by pressing on this paper. Let's see. Are you guys like me and you watch videos and you see people struggling like this and you're like, oh, just do it this way, do it this way or move this and go here, or do you all do that when you're watching a video? Because I do. <laughs> it's like I'm sitting in the craft room with them. Okay. Uh, goodness. Okay, it's got loop-de-loops on it. And then I'm gonna take some more tear tape, just so I don't have an issue. I'm actually gonna take two pieces. because we want this to stay on here. And then what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna put some dimensional dots on here, but I wanna make sure this string doesn't go anywhere when it's on the page. So I call it string, it's actually called twine. If you didn't have any of this, you could also, if you have some embroidery floss, 
you could use that. The only difference would be is a, a lot of embroidery floss has a gloss to it. Um, this is pretty matte. So let's take some dimensionals now. It almost reminds me of like a lasso is the way that, you know, it's all kind of made a circle now, the string or the twine. Okay, let's see. Put these aside. Getting there guys, we're almost done. And then I'm gonna bring in the left hand page and put them together. And then I'll be taking now, because someone wrote a request it, and I wanna honor that. They requested that when I do my close up shots at the end, that I also, um, put, let's see if I can put this in here, that I do a two page spread where the pages are together. So I'm gonna try and do that and see how well I can get that done. I have a professional like camera set up, but it only in the corner of my room, it only goes by, I think it's like 36 inches wide. Um, and it's real hard to get the double pages on there. So I'm gonna try something out this else this time. So bear with me, I am trying and I do hear you and I can see the benefit of taking pictures with the two sheets backed, you know, right up to each other without our mats underneath. So let me put this in there. Okay, so let's pull. Let me get some of my, my mess out of the way here. And we'll bring this over. It's a little dark over in that corner. It's pretty cloudy here today, so. Um, even though I have my lights on in my room and I have my shooting lights on, it's still a little dark. Okay, so I just saw something I need to clean up. When you take them off the mat, sometimes you have to clean up an edge here. I just take some small scissors and do that. There's a little bit here on this side. If you're using a post-bound album, it shows more than if you do a ring um, book or album and I do a ring so it's not as important so here are the pages let me see if I can bring you out a little and you can see my craft room and at least I can see my belly <laughs> okay that's a little bit better so there are the two pages together um, and I really like it so and I was able to use some of my stash which makes me feel better too so there we go. Hopefully you enjoyed this and you got something out of it. I'd love to hear your comments. I am still giving away a free stamp and die set every month. I just make a drawing at the end of the month and I pull a hat out, put a name out of a hat and hat, pardon me, and send that out to you. So I would love comments below. And um, until next time, you all have a good day. Bye-bye. Call